Hello my friends and welcome to this conversational video about the generation of random maps in Heroes of Might and Magic 3 using the random map editor. I have been on an absolute mission for those of you who have been watching my playthroughs of these random maps to try to figure out a template that generates water where the water actually matters and you find yourself wanting to go out onto the ocean, travel between continents and do the cool things that are out on the ocean as well. All too often I get maps just like this one. Um, that you can see in the upper right corner, the map as I've revealed the whole map for us here, with all of the kind of zones kind of clumped together, you can see there in the top right corner, um, in the sort of center of the map, there are going to be some, you know, um, underground, if you've got underground switched on as well, but generally speaking, there's no particular reason to go out in the water. So I've been messing around with the random map generator quite a lot, pulling all the different levers and changing all the settings inside there to see if I can actually make it so that these zones that get generated here find their way to the edge of the map and you get an, sort of an inland sea. So I haven't found anywhere else on the internet on Reddit or anyone else who's been able to do this, but I think I've come up with something and I thought it would be worth sharing with you guys. And we're back at the map creation screen for this. Uh, we're going to be playing random map, we've got that turned on. Now, with this particular template, what I've figured out is that you're better off going for normal water content and then hacking at the size of the zones themselves inside the template editor rather than using the island setting, at least in my experience. Let's have a look and see what we get for our first map. Voila! Hello! Here we are. It's a six-player template with a basket of other zones spread around. What you can see in the top right-hand corner here is exactly what I was trying to generate, which is sparse islands, not completely sparse. Uh, we've got good starting sort of size to the initial zones. You can see for the blue player here, orange is over here on the left. And then we have purple and tan. In between, we've got an inland sea. We've got a lovely neutral. I oh, know that's Greenstown area there. <laughs> we have a neutral area here, though, uh, with the highland. Small zone with a small town. And then red's all the way over the other side of the map. Underneath the ground, there's a limited amount of underground with towns uh, included. So three zones, each with a uh, town included. And this is actually at the heart of the trick I've, I've come up with to convince the template to actually behave this way, is to use underground zones that are tethered to the above ground via a wide connection, as we'll see. Anyway, that's the first shot. Let's have a look at uh, another one. And here we are again, and similar actually to last time, kind of two rival continents with a, a sea in between. Um, we've got, hopefully up and down the coast, there are access points to the ocean. There's a shipyard there, so the... Uh, tan player here can jump in a boat and start doing things hopefully early in the game. He'll want to do that. That's I guess what I'm trying to to say. I want this Orange Cove player getting in the boat, wanting to sh sail around, see if he can land on any of these areas up here. Uh, although actually there aren't any great places to land, so that's a bit of a bummer. Well, that's a bit of a bummer that he can't get there, but he can sail all the way over here obviously, land on green shores. Uh, he can land here on um, green shores here. Purple Shores. It's all sort of available for this naval warfare thing going on. There's plenty of prizes out in the ocean for them to get. Key to this is there are undergrounds, and the undergrounds are connected to one another. Um, but, uh, as again, I'll show you in the template, I've made the connections between the undergrounds very, very difficult to unlock with big monster hordes blocking the portals. Uh, so this will be... Hmm, probably lots of magma elementals might be the guardians that are stopping uh, the travel between the underground zones. Let's have a look at a third one. How good! Look at this! It's exactly what I wanted! Not only did I want uh, water to matter in the middle of the map and stuff, I also wanted stuff happening at the edges of the map. I love that this goes all the way up to the very top of the map now. I'm going to show you guys what I did to make that happen. So much mucking around I did to actually make it happen. Uh, again, underground is tethered, these, these three sort of zones, and they end up getting kind of plonked underneath, generally underneath where the continents are. I'm going to show you one more, because I'm so proud of it. Mm. Mm. And here we are again. <laughs> I mean, just exactly what I wanted. Look at this. Interesting area in the middle of the map to be fought over. Um, how do you actually get in here? Oh, there's a portal here. I'm not sure you can land on that piece of ground. I'm not sure. Oh, there's, there's actually two portals to this place. Okay, all right. Well, that's cool. Yeah, so it's all connected. But uh, yeah, water matters in the middle, and I'm hoping... I'm hoping that what this is going to do is, yeah, cause a lot of seafaring. I want to be picking navigation for my secondary skills. 
Um, yeah, I, I, I'm optimistic. I'm going to be playing on this template for the foreseeable future on the channel, I think. Right, so for those of you guys who are interested in hacking away at the template editor, I'm going to show you what I've done to get this behavior. Okay, so here is the template. And for those of you who are not familiar with the template editor, it comes as part of the package when you download Horn of the Abyss. I don't know if it's also part of the HD hmm, stuff when you download it. Anyway, if you're on Horn of the Abyss, you'll probably already know what this stuff is and how to go about it. If not, I thoroughly rec recommend checking it out, giving it a try for yourself. Each of the players on the template is represented by their respective color in the game. So this is a six player template. We've got red, blue, orange, tan, purple, and green, uh, the first six players in the game. Um, cyan or light blue and uh, I guess light pink are the players seven and eight that aren't present. So their individual zones are defined here, and what I've got these set to, the little sunshine symbol you can maybe see there is each of the players are destined to start the game above ground. They each have a castle um, and some resources which are randomly chosen. Half are crystal and gems, the other half are mercury and sulfur. They're both connected via, and we'll talk about these connections in a second, to a treasure zone that then has one of every mine. And that zone is the stuff, is the underground zone, the, one, the ones we saw before. So this one, this one, and this one are all uh, the, the three underground zones. These three zones are treasure only, uh, or treasure with a castle, all random, strongly, strongly um, resistant in terms of the connection between them. So the 15 here means that there's a very strong monster defender uh, blocking the path between these uh, sort of underworlds. And what the template seems to want to do is always create uh, monoliths between these three. So I didn't need to... Oh, that's why. Uh, so we'll go into this in depth as to how and why this has come about, right? But when you force the connection to be a monolith, uh, that means that it will allow the three underground zones to kind of separate and go wherever they need to be under, underneath the map. So these three are all standard monolith big connections at 15. Okay. These connections here are all... Um, default, so that allows the uh, player town, the main access point for the player to get off his own uh, island into the underground uh, through here, as you can see. Uh, now, uh, when I first started messing with the template, I was under the illusion that because there's, if you only put one access point for your starting zone and it picks, uh, say, a monolith, that your starting zone would be surrounded by unpassable terrain and just one monolith. That I find actually isn't the case. Instead, what it will do is create a connection to whatever you say, but if it's above ground, it will also do just randomly shipyards and stuff on the surface. So if we go back to the game for a second, you can see here, for example, on this uh, on this template I uh, generated just for this for, for this purpose. Once again, all the way to the top of the map. Look at all this sparseness here. So so nice. Even though there's only one connection here to the underground, which will probably be a gate. There it is. There's also Boom! Shipyard this side, shipyard that side. It's just the way the generator is behaving. Okay, this is with a lot of trial and error. I've just discovered that this is the case. What's going on down here? Let's have a look. Nothing. Look at that shipyard for the Inferno Town at the top, and there'll be some sort of underground connection here. It could be either a portal or a. No, there it is. Boom. So it's just working. Okay, so that's the connection between the underground zone that kind of has all of the you know first initial. There's, there's a good town there and there's good resources there. So it's kind of a bit of a priority for the player to go underground, but also there's a priority to get in that shipyard. You can always go in here and see the six. You can always make this bigger, make it harder for him to get to the underground to encourage him onto the boat uh, sooner. I might even do that actually before I sign off. Anyway, not necessary for the purposes of making this video. I might do some m minor tweaks to these monster strengths just before I start the next run uh, that I'm gonna be doing. Um, Okay, so now, here's the trick. Here's the thing that really makes it work, right? Connected to that underground zone is a wide connection, right? Where you go in here and you select wide, and it can be anything. It could be a monolith, in which case it's an unguarded monolith, or it could be just a, an unguarded um, subterranean gate or whatever, okay? To another uh, high treasure zone with you know, good resources in it. Critically, though, this zone is above ground, Okay, and what you're going to start getting is clustering. This is above ground, this is above ground, but you're forcing this underground, okay? On the other side, of course, of this is the second player. So the players pair off together uh, as a starting point, um, as you can see in this in this pattern here as well. All the stuff around the outside is above ground. So by forcing, you're telling the template which goes which zones are above and which zones are below ground, and that really seems to make a big difference 
to getting to it to behave itself. As I said at the beginning, by hacking away at the size of these zones, you can much better influence the content of the water as opposed to using the islands setting. Um, when you just go normal um, inside the uh, template uh, map creation, you get a much better result. Maybe just for demonstration, I'll show you what happens if you pick islands with this. Okay, so back in map generation, if we go to islands here, let's just see what the heck it does. Yeah, and as you can see, it does it, but way too much meaningless water all the way out here. This is a, it's the kind of thing I hate seeing is tons of water down at the bottom of the map. There's no reason for anyone to go out here. Not enough land on the surface. Yeah, and we're getting some very weird zones getting created as a result. So, yeah, the template is very much designed to be built to, to be run on water equals normal. In terms of other key things that are sitting inside the template, what other changes have I made? There's probably one other thing worth mentioning. In the template uh, menu, if you go to settings here, there's a option down the bottom, these rocks blocks, blocks radius. I've spent a lot of time messing with this to see if I could uh, make it useful. I found in the end I ended up disabling it. One thing that really does help though is zone sparseness. If you turn this on and turn it up above 1.0, I, I found 1.5 to be kind of the sweet spot. This is a parameter that really helps get the content of the map out to those corners. So you can have towns or you can have even any location of any interest might find its way to an upper right corner or a bottom left corner or, or, or what have you. So that's one other important setting. I was about to start editing the video, putting everything together, and then I realized there's something I didn't actually make sure I showed you, which is the size of every zone. The size of the zones is crucial. You can't just add a whole extra, you could add an extra zone in here. You know, you can't just do that and, and run it. It will start to tip the boat over. It's a very, very sensitive thing, right? You just can't do that. Um, each player's own is, for the record, so you guys know, size 9, because you would never know, because the size of this thing is all scalable, right? By the way, how good is this interface? <laughs> it's like something, it's like a, a proper, you know, um, I don't know, um, graphical tool. Uh, it, it's just, I, I'm just in awe of the guys who do all this stuff, the Horn of the Abyss and everything else. These ones here are also size 9, and you can see visually they look about the same, all size 9, the big ones are all size 9. Uh, the little underground zones are size 5. Sounds ridiculous, but the RMG will actually massage all these relative sizes around to get to its final destination. Uh, and then these ones here, these connectors, are size 4. So just uh, in case anyone is trying to perfectly mimic exactly what I'm doing, there's one other change I'm going to make as well before I actually start using the template, which is I'm going to re-randomize the uh, allocation I just noticed the gem and crystal, sorry, is it this one here? Gem and crystal, gem and crystal on both sides. And then this one has mercury sulfur on both sides. I'm going to re-randomize that so that each of the three has uh, the opposite on each side. So I'm going to probably turn this one here into gem and crystal uh, and this one here into mercury and sulfur. I might also just bump the six up here to discourage that underground early, that thing I said before as well. And then I'm going to jump into the next, um, jump into the next playthrough. So that's the video for today. Just a quick one. I just really wanted to share this with you because I've been trying, I've been trialing and erroring for ages trying to get this uh, game, trying to get this random map generator to give me a water matters experience. So I'm really excited to try this one out. And um, I think I am going to hit the record button, put it up on the channel and uh, share my journey with you guys as we go. Um, so watch out for that. In the meantime, stay frosty. I'll see you next time.